having me. Thank you for having me. Hi. I, uh, yeah, what a great introduction I, that I wrote. Um, <laughs> and there's this other thing that I did, and there's this other thing that I did. Anyway, um, I, uh, you know, it's funny, it's uh, the end of the line. First of all, thank you. Uh, I want to thank Donna and Salt for asking me to do this because I love doing this. They have these out in LA and that they have it here in, in Maine, in my hometown, that I get to already be here and get to come and tell you guys a story is very exciting for me to be able to participate. So thank you for asking me. Thank you for having me. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, I, uh, born here, uh, and just a little background, and many of you here are familiar to me, and I'm familiar with you, and some of you know this, and for those who don't, and you're new to whoever the hell I am, I'm gonna give you a mini background on me just for context. Um, I, was, I was born in Portland, um, at Maine Med in 1968, I'm 48, uh, and I know I look good, and uh, <laughs> I was born a girl, and I know, I know, let's take it in, for those of you who don't, okay, okay, gotcha, and not that, you, not that you're gonna be like weirded out by that, but just settle in with that idea, with the beard for a second. <laughs> and uh, so I'm, we lived in Bridgeton, Maine, um, until I was 12, and I grew up, um, as a girl and socialized as a girl. And so that, um, it wasn't, I wasn't brutalized by my gender, which a lot of people who are transgender feel that way, and, and rightly so, because it's very hard to be in the body that you don't necessarily want to be in, you wanna be in a different body. Um, <clears throat> and I didn't feel like I was born in the wrong body, I feel like I was born in the right body, I just wanted to make some changes to it. And, um, and I did. And I'm very happy about it, and I've lived a very happy life, and I've um, moved 10 years ago um, to Los Angeles. I've been out there for 10 years, which I can't even believe I've been gone that long. And um, in that time that I left was when I made my actual physical transformation. I, um, I had known who I was for a long time, but it took me a very long time to actually make the decision without the voices of other people in my head to actually do the things that I wanted to do for myself without the influence of others, to get really quiet and hear only my own voice and do what I wanted to do, which was to take testosterone and have this fucking beard. I really wanted the beard. I really, I wanted the beard. And um, so, um, and which by the way, you can't pick and choose the things that testosterone does. Um, there's some things I expected, like hair grew on my legs and, uh, started to grow up my ass. Um, it grew about halfway up my ass. I have a mullet on my ass. <clears throat> and main style. And, uh, and the, but one of the things that happened was that I started to lose my hair on my head. You can't pick and choose the shit that happens <laughs> taking testosterone. Like you, you just can't, like you're not, and I'm like, I want to be a man, I just don't want to be that much of a man. <laughs> Can we reel some of this shit in, please? <laughs> testosterone, dear testosterone. And um, so living in LA, I'm, I, got a, I definitely am open and honest about saying that I was influenced by Los Angeles and making the decision that I just got a hair transplant right here. I'm not even kidding. I'm, kid I'm, I'm not even kidding. I'm, I did, and on June 30th, I got a hair transplant right here, and so it's on its way back in, but it's not in yet. It's like baby fuzz right now, and I've been sharing this with people. I posted on Facebook about it, and someone messaged me, and they were like, you know, I, you're being very public about this. Like, do, don't you want, don't you just want it to, like, grow in and never mention anything? I'm like, what, like, like, I should be embarrassed by, like... A hair transplant? I'm like, I have told thousands and thousands and thousands of people on stage as a comic that I have a vagina. You think I'm gonna draw the line at hair transplant? <laughs> Fuck no. So anyway, so but I but I'm in that weird awkward wearing a hat still stage. But I'll tell anybody. It's so weird. Anyway, um, so anyway, I've become this man I, that I always knew that I was, and I'm very happy living in Los Angeles. And uh, but I've been away for ten years, and I come back to visit regularly. And my whole family knows um, about my transition. And uh, everybody's great about it. 
Um, and I wrote a letter to my immediate family to explain what I wanted to do and how I felt. And then I wrote another letter to my extended family. And then I, and the one person that we forgot to tell was my grandmother, <clears throat> who's 99, and who probably could give a shit at this point. Like, whatever I do, you know what I mean? She's seen it all and produced, you know, and, but um, I don't know why, but we forgot to, I forgot to include her. I just thought, like, I just thought my gossipy cousins on my mom's side would, like, eventually fucking tell her. You know what I'm saying? You know, you, everybody's got those cousins, right? Anyway, I just thought, I just assumed that they would, like, fill her in, in their way. And um, no, nobody did, I guess. And uh, it had been a while since I'd seen her because when I would come home, she lived in Portland area. My parents live up here. And, uh, and so in that time period of my physical transformation, I would come home, and there would been, there would been a couple years before I had seen her. I know that sounds crazy, but... So, and now she's 99, she'll be 100 in December, and she has full-on um, dementia, like full-on, like body, totally solid, mind, ever-loving, ever gone, just gone. Um, and so there's a lot of different dynamics going on because my mother still calls me by my birth name, <laughs> is fine. It doesn't offend me. It doesn't upset me as a trans person. I was born my mother's daughter. That's fine. I get it. We have a mother-daughter relationship. We go for the jugular. We fight like mother-daughter. We just, we have a mother-daughter relationship. We do. So she calls me Ian and Janet, he and she all in the same sentence. She sounds like a crazy person, really. <laughs> so when we're out in public and she says that, I'm like, mom, you know, if you keep talking like that, we're going to put you in a home. Um, but she, you know, is try she was pre now my grandmother now is in the care of my mother because she can't be at home alone anymore and um, so my grandmother is living at my parents house for the last two years and um, I was filming something and I had to grow out my beard very long and gnarly and which I was stoked about and um, I was coming home for like a break. And uh, I, my mom said, Nanny's here. You know, Nanny's here. And I said, yeah. And she said, well, I'm starting to prep her by repeating that you're coming to visit. I'm, I'm repeating it over and over, hoping that eventually it will sink in that you're coming to visit. So my mother's been going, Janet's coming home. Janet's coming home. You know, Janet's going to be here this weekend. You know who's coming this weekend? Janet's coming this weekend. Janet's coming, Janet's coming. <laughs> and uh, so, and this is my grandmother who, when I was a young teenager, she used to give me her hand-me-down bras. Like I had like a, a lot of like, hand-me-down girl clothes from her, stuff that, like I had a relationship with her that was very granddaughterly. And uh, you know, I mean, so, I'm not unfamiliar to her, but at the same time, the last time she saw me, I was a very butch lesbian. Um, so her context for me was still female. Um, so I, I'm, I'm trying to imagine like what, I know my mother's saying Janet's coming home to her, but I'm trying to imagine what she thinks is who's gonna walk in the door. And I'm wondering if she retained any information from people talking about my gender or what I might be up to from previous conversations, but none of that was retained. And my mother didn't help by reinforcing that Janet was coming home. So um, I remember I walked in the door and um, <laughs> my, my mom was very excited for me to see her because I hadn't seen her in a while. And she said, I walked in the door and uh, my grandmother was sitting on the couch and uh, my mom comes to the door and gives me a hug and my grandmother looks up and she said, she said, oh, hello, who are you? And my mother jumped in and said, that's Janet. <laughs> and my grandmother goes, that's not fucking Janet. I'm not the crazy one here. 
I'd like my car keys back. I'd like to go home now. Um, I sat down in the, in the rocker next to, my mo- next to my mother and my grandmother on the couch, and um, my mother, for some reason, is like really intensely o- preoccupied with me explaining to my grandmother who I am. <sighs> and I'm like, she's not going to remember. I don't understand what your obsession with me explaining to her, someone who's not going to remember. She's like 10 Second Tom from 50 First Dates, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> She's on a loop. She's got, she's got the last 10 seconds of whatever you said, and that's it. And then she's back on to like, hi, how are you? Oh, hi, how are you? Oh, hi, how are you? Oh, hi. That's it. And I said, I just don't, why do you, I said, okay, fine, I'll do it, I'll do it. And I said, Nanny, I said, I know you're probably wondering who I am, because when I'm in the room by myself, she thinks I'm my brother Jeff. When my brother Jeff is in the room, she thinks I'm my brother Rob. And when we're all in the room, she doesn't know what the hell is going on. So she's, I said, I know you're wondering who I am. And she said, yeah. And I said, listen, <clears throat> I am Ian. And I looked over at my mother, and I said, I am Janet's boyfriend. <laughs> she said, well, how did you meet? I said, um, in a surgical suite in San Francisco. Um, as far as aligning that with the end of the line, <laughs> like, two things I think about my grandmother's age, and it's nearing the end of the line for her. Um, and sort of like, I, I, th- and I don't know why I have to feel like I have to explain this. I was trying to think about this. For me, it's the end of the line for me. Like, I am finally who I want to be and how I want to express myself. And I guess maybe my grandmother is too. She's probably like, fuck it (laughs) at this point, you know? It's end of the line. We are who we want to be. And uh, anyway, um, thank you very much. Thanks for listening. Thanks. (laughs) 